Let's try another example that's a little bit more difficult. We have sodium and sulfur. So again, we do our nuclear symbols, 11 protons, 11 electrons, 12 neutrons. 16 protons, 16 neutrons, 16 electrons. Everything's the same. Now again, we're going to focus on the valence. I'll draw the whole thing, but I want you to understand the valence is all we're interested in. We have 11 electrons, so we have 1s. There's two of them. 2s will have two. And then we have the two p's. Okay, but what we really care about is this valence right here, the 3s1. Okay, there's one left electron left over. There's 10 electrons here. Let's do the dot while we're here. That would be one dot right there, that valence electron. Okay. And then let's look at sulfur. Sulfur has 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Again, it's full. But then we get to the valence. Sulfur still has... 16 electrons total, there's 10 accounted for there, we have 6 more. So we have 3s, and there are 2 of them. And we have our 3p orbitals, so we have 1, 2, 3, there's the Huns rule again, and the fourth one goes there. So if we draw the dot diagram of sulfur, again with x's, we have the 2s there, then the p's, 1, two, three, showing the Huns rule, and then we can put the fourth one wherever we want. I'm just going to put it here. Okay. You can see that sodium has one extra electron. It wants to have a complete outer shell, so it can lose the one, which is the easiest, or it can gain seven more, which would be very difficult, so we don't do that energetically. Here, sulfur clearly needs two more electrons to have that outer shell complete, so how can we do that? We start with the configuration. We really don't need any of this, so let me erase it, just so you can see the bottom line. When we write these things out, we really only need to pay attention to the valence. We know here that this electron could easily transfer right there. If it does, this would become positive, and this would become negative. This is a transfer. That's what makes it different from covalent. Same thing here. This electron can go there. So let's transfer it. Leaves there, goes there. So that sodium is satisfied. But what about the sulfur? It's still not satisfied. It still needs another electron. Well, we have to understand that when we have uh, something like water here, it's not just two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. It's trillions and trillions of atoms that are available in the atmosphere. Same thing here. There's lots of sodiums around. So what if we just use another sodium? What if we come here with another sodium atom, which would have another 3s, and let's transfer that one as well over to here, making that positive. That's a negative 2. This will be transferred to there, see? Get rid of that, so that's plus one, and that's minus two. And you can write that with minuses like I did, or minus two like this, or you could mi two minus, it's all the same thing, okay? You see this is slightly different, this time when we write the formula, notice we have Na, which is plus one, sulfur's minus two, and we needed two sodiums. That's our formula. 